Hey you, it's Lisa Childs here from TriedTestedAndTrue.com and today I'm sharing with you 26 things to never do with your Instant Pot. The first thing you should absolutely never do with your Instant Pot is set it on the stove top. Especially if you have a glass stove top, don't put your Instant Pot on there because sometimes it can be warm already, someone can accidentally turn it on. I know it sounds like a given, but I cannot tell you how many Instant Pots I've seen destroyed and melted on the bottom because of this. Number two is do not freak out the first time you have to release the pressure in your Instant Pot. Something I also advise is if it's the first time you're pressure cooking with an Instant Pot at home, make sure you warn your cats, dogs, children, spouses, partners, anyone in the near vicinity so they don't freak out because it can be a little startling. The next thing you should never do with your Instant Pot is cook without the ceiling ring in the lid. This is the ceiling ring and you need this every single time you use your Instant Pot. This is the seal that keeps everything pressurized and keeps all that steam and pressure inside your pot. So you need to make sure that it's snugly put into your lid every single time before you start cooking. Next, if you're ever making soup, broth, or anything that has a lot of liquid inside your Instant Pot, do not do a quick release. A quick release is when you turn the sealing knob from sealing to venting in one go. If you do a quick release when there is a ton of liquid and a ton of pressure in here, you will probably get a lot of your dinner, your soup, whatever is in your pot coming out of the sealing pin part. The reason is because if you have a pot full of boiling liquid, there's a ton of pressure in there. When you release that pressure, it will all come sputtering and spewing out of the lid and it can be really dangerous. So just don't do a quick release. Let it naturally pressure release or release the steam in short bursts. Next, don't expect the food to only cook for the specified cook time in a recipe. It's not like a microwave in that way because it takes time for the Instant Pot to come up to pressure, it takes time to pressure cook, and then it takes time to depressurize the pot. So make sure you add in a little 30 minute buffer for almost anything that you make. In some ways, the Instant Pot is a little bit like an oven. In an oven recipe, you also need to preheat your oven, you need to let the food cook, and then you usually need to let the food cool for a little bit before you can eat it. So it's kind of like that. It's gonna take just a little extra time. On that same note, don't cook a huge full on complicated meal for your first time using the Instant Pot. Don't ruin family dinner because it took way longer than you thought or you ran into some difficulties. Just make something really simple, a side dish, something that's not going to destroy your dinner time. That's one way to lose all your confidence using the Instant Pot is ruining the first meal. So. Don't do anything complicated, just do a side dish like hard boiled eggs, broccoli, rice, something that's pretty foolproof and you can get all those recipes on my website at triedtestedandtrue.com. Okay, this is a really important one. It's don't pick up the Instant Pot by the handle. This handle is not meant to be used as a carrying handle. If you do, the lid could accidentally slide off and you could drop your pot, you could get really hurt, so just don't do it. Instead, what you can do is carry the Instant Pot by the little sides right here. The sides don't get very hot while you're cooking, so you can lift it up on its side, or you can kind of use these little notches on the side to lift it up. But whether you're cooking or not, don't hold the Instant Pot by the lid. Don't forget about the condensation collector on the back. So this little plastic dude goes right here on the back of your Instant Pot. So this little guy just sticks right on the back of your Instant Pot. It's really simple to just snap it in there. The condensation collector collects extra liquid or anything that's come out of the pot that drains off of the lid and it collects in here. If you don't remember that it's there, it can fill up and it can get moldy. It's really rather gross. So make sure that you're checking this often and making sure that it's not full. You can just empty it and clean it in the dishwasher or by hand. For some reason, it's really popular advice to cover the top of your Instant Pot when you're releasing the pressure. Some people will use a towel or a dishcloth to just put over it and then they'll release the pressure. Don't do this. The reason is because if you cover this, it's going to void the manufacturer's warranty. It's definitely not safe. Your towel or whatever you cover this with could get lodged and like vacuumed into this part right here and you could be in a world of trouble. So please don't cover your Instant Pot with anything to obstruct this little area right here. 
it's a safety feature for a reason. Number 10 is don't do a quick release for any large cuts of meat. Instead, do a natural pressure release. If you're cooking anything that's a large chunk of meat, like even large chicken breast, pulled pork, roast, anything that really needs that extra time, don't do a quick release. Instead, let it naturally pressure release and your meat will be way more tender than if you'd done a quick release. I know this one's gonna sound really silly, but don't put food in the inner base. This is the base of the Instant Pot and you do not do any cooking in here. This is where the heating element for the Instant Pot is and it is not meant for cooking. Instead, all of your cooking is always done in the Instant Pot liner, so make sure that your liner is in here. If you give instructions to someone in your house that doesn't normally do the cooking or doesn't know how to use the Instant Pot, make sure you specify that you're going to need to use the Instant Pot liner inside the base, not just dumping stuff in the Instant Pot. I don't mean to sound condescending, but honestly, I would not be telling you if this didn't happen day in and day out and people weren't messaging me, asking me what to do, asking me if it's okay, and seeing so many destroyed, ruined pots that just have to go straight to the trash because of this. So don't put anything in the Instant Pot unless it's in the liner. Don't release the pressure on your Instant Pot next to anything that can't get wet or at least dirty. If you release the pressure, there's going to be a lot of steam and food and pressure. It's not a ton of food, but if you put it under your cabinets, it will get all over your cabinets. So make sure that you're there and can wipe them down right away or you're not doing a quick release right next to like white curtains or something that can't be cleaned right away. This is a really good tip. That's one of my best tips ever. Don't store your Instant Pot with the lid on. Just like you wouldn't store Tupperware or any sort of storage container with the lid on, don't do that with your Instant Pot. Otherwise, a lot of those smells are gonna get trapped into your pot, it's gonna get trapped into your lid, in the ceiling ring, and it will honestly smell like the last thing you cooked, no matter how well you cleaned it before. So if you don't want your Instant Pot cheesecake to smell like last night's curry, make sure you clean everything really nicely and then store your lid upside down like this. This will allow the Instant Pot to breathe, to vaporize, and not lock in any gross smells. Speaking of the lid, when you use the saute feature on the Instant Pot, which is one of the best features of the Instant Pot, make sure you remember not to put on the lid. If your Instant Pot is on saute and you put the lid on, it will automatically turn off. It's just a safety feature and it's there to keep you safe. The next tip is to never forget to add liquid when you're pressure cooking. For a six quart instant pot, which is what most people have, you'll need a minimum of one cup of water no matter what you cook. Until you get into really advanced instant pot cooking, just know that your minimum is one cup of water or liquid when you're pressure cooking. The liquid can be water, broth, juice, beer, anything like that, but just don't pressure cook with dairy. It can curdle, it can burn, just don't do it. In the same breath, don't add too much liquid to your Instant Pot, otherwise it can overcook your food. For example, if you have a food that cooks really, really quickly or is really delicate, like Instant Pot broccoli or hard boiled eggs, any amount of overcooking those foods can be really detrimental. That's why if the recipe says to add one cup of water, don't go all crazy and add three cups of water because it's going to overcook your food. More liquid in your Instant Pot equals more time cooking, more time coming to pressure, more time with heat on your food, and it will definitely overcook your food. So don't add too much liquid. It's not going to evaporate out. You really don't need very much. My next tip is don't run out and go buy a ton of Instant Pot accessories right away. If you've watched my best Instant Pot accessories to buy and avoid video, you know that I recommend not buying anything until you've used your Instant Pot for at least a month or two. I myself have lots of Instant Pot accessories and I have reviewed and tested so many different kinds, but I'll tell you the ones that you actually need and the ones you don't. Don't go out and buy a whole lot of things. Test out your Instant Pot, see how you use it, see what types of accessories you need, because really you don't need a whole lot. If you like these tips, make sure you take out your phone right now 
subscribe to this channel and go follow me on Instagram at tried tested true. This one also seems kind of silly, but don't forget to read the manual. The manual is really helpful. And if you've never used an electric pressure cooker or a pressure cooker in general, the manual will really help you have good success and confidence. I also don't want you getting hurt or be really scared or intimidated to use it. So read the manual or you can watch my Instant Pot 101 video and that will help you a lot as well. Next, don't expect anything you make in the Instant Pot to come out crispy or baked on its own. The Instant Pot can do a lot of things, but it is not a fryer, it is not an oven, it is a pressure cooker that cooks with liquid and steam. So you're not going to get anything that's dry, baked, fluffy, everything that you make in here, as far as like a baked good, is going to be denser because it's made with steam. The next don't is don't overfill your Instant Pot. There's a max line on this Instant Pot and it's there for a reason. So don't fill up any liquid past that max line or else it can be a little unsafe. The only time I've ever filled past the max line is when I'm using something that's not liquid. So I can fill the pot up with some broccoli in a steamer basket that goes above that max line or some crab legs that are kind of all over the place, but they are fine as long as it's not liquid. Next, don't be intimidated by all of these buttons. I know it can seem like a lot of different buttons and settings and all these things, but honestly, don't worry about it. The only buttons you really need are the saute button, the manual or pressure cook button, and everything else is just a preset. I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but don't use dairy as the primary cooking liquid while you're pressure cooking. There are some recipes that have heavy cream or some kind of dairy in the pot while it's pressure cooking and that's fine, but don't let it be the primary source. Almost all of those recipes will have like a chicken broth or water or something else supplementing it so it kind of dilutes the dairy. Otherwise, the dairy can curdle, it can burn, and it will not work. So please don't use any dairy for pressure cooking. The Instant Pot is amazing because it has that saute feature so you can sear things and brown things before you pressure cook them. But don't forget to deglaze your pot before pressure cooking. Deglazing is when you get all those brown bits off the bottom of the pot and you lift them off the pot with some kind of cooking liquid. You want to make sure to scrape all those brown bits off the bottom of the pot, otherwise they will get stuck, they'll burn when you start pressure cooking, so make sure you deglaze your pot. Next, don't put anything over the vent while it's releasing the pressure. Don't put your hands, your face, your arm, don't move anything on top of it. Just don't do it. It's extremely hot and it will burn you. Another thing that I'm just begging you please don't do is move your pressure cooker while it's still cooking. I've had some of my readers tell me that they just move the Instant Pot outside when they're ready to release the pressure and I, I just can't with that because <laughs> that is extremely unsafe. If you are carrying around a super hot pressurized piece of metal machinery appliance thing, that is really unsafe. If you drop it, it could explode. Just, I'm begging you, please don't move your Instant Pot while it's pressure cooking. And I'm not talking like you can't move it like two inches on the counter. Like obviously you can move it, but don't lift it up and change the location while it's cooking or while it's pressurized. That's just not safe at all. And last, don't try and wiggle this lid off before the pot has completely depressurized. I'll admit I've done this before and I'll also admit to you that I paid for it. When you try and wiggle this lid off before it is completely depressurized by you know, pressing down on the pin, trying to wiggle this off while it's still pressurized, it is really unsafe. The reason is because there is still too much pressure to safely open the pot. One time I had a lot of liquid in my pot. I think I was making soup or something like that. And I tried to wiggle the lid off before it was ready. Well, the soup was still at like a rolling boil. And so when I tried to take off the lid, it just started spewing out of the sides because it was still boiling super violently. So please, I'm begging you, don't try and wiggle that lid off or do anything to manipulate it to get it off sooner. It will come off in one minute. Just be patient. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you watch this video next where I share 26 Instant Pot do's and tricks and tips that will really save you. So we'll see you next time. Bye.